Headwaters Science Center live show at 3.30. Did. Yeah, we had <laughs> one issue that we found was everything was small. So we, almost, we, had, we didn't identify much of anything until we got our kind of with our scope here. But we did find some good things. I want to introduce Carl. Carl, say hi, tell them who you are. Hi, I'm Carl. I'm the ASA student and I work with the business center here and hopefully for the whole Yeah, so we're going to keep our Carl on board because not only did we find some very good stuff, we want to preserve some of this stuff. We've got some pretty interesting caddis flies here we want to put into the jar, and uh, we're going to have Carl help us figure out how we're going to do that. What do we need to put in the jar, Carl? So we need the first thing is the mixture of the So we had to change that. We had some 95. What did we do? Uh, we had 95% alcohol, and then we had water, and we need to get to something like 80. We went for 80 ethanol, so that's pure, essentially pure moonshine. Yep, so this will be not something you want to drink, but what we need is this for one of these bottles, and then we also have these, which are blank currently, but these are labels for actually the animals and preserved specimens that are going to be. Well, a couple of questions. What are you going to put some information on there? What are you going to put that information on? A label, or is it going to be on a stick? Where are you going to put it in the catalog somewhere? We're going to put it where? Right in the, right in the jar, right? So that we won't lose track of, yeah. of what we find. So, we're going to do two things. We're going to tell you how to do that right, how to do that well. Um, and what we try to do is we're trying to uh, identify a species, but at least we go down to the family level if we can't figure it out. That's one of the reasons why we use a jar, because there are better experts than we are. We just kind of stumbled through some of this stuff today because we saw something we hadn't seen for a while. But if we find something we've never seen before, we can take that to a, an entomology expert in the products and they can figure that out for us. So, as we move through this uh, this uh, this sample here, we did also take an assessment. So why don't you make that start up with the family of species for the caddis fly, the caddis fly right here. So well, let's go back to the stone fly. We've got a stone fly in here. Those are the first one. Let's put that in a jar. Yeah, the reason we're making the labels and stuff is these are good for context if you're taking this to an expert. Is this lets them know a little bit more about what they might be looking for. Okay, well, what if we need to put in there? We need to put the family in the species that we can. Stone fly, and that's uh, the copter. The copter, yeah. The copter day is the family, so we put that in the copter. And then the location, we've got the GPS location right here. We'll um, put that in there, I'll put the screen it off there. And that's so that we can say, well, where was it? Because if we say we found it, but we didn't say where is it, we are actually giving a very good amount of information for, for how, what water it is we're talking about. So we've got the GPS coordinates of Chicago, which is 47 points to top. 47 points. Four one three one one nine. Right here. And then the one which is the negative nine four one nine one. And that might not mean much to you. Come on, but um, but that will help you out. You can always see these two uh latitude longitude figures. And you can with Google Maps or some other uh, format that you have, you can find exactly where that location was. And I told you where that was. It was just uh north of Highway Nine. In this Google Maps River, about a mile north of uh, mile south of Lake Tanganyika. Also, the time and the day, well, we just plugged this, this bucket about two hours ago, or maybe an hour ago. It's a change now, so we've been hurrying our way through it. Yeah, it is. It's the 22nd. So we've got June 22nd, next to 2021, and our time starts time is 1322. We like to use military time because then we might have to wonder whether it's day or p.m. That, that translates to 122. All right. And also, one more little piece of equipment we have to put on there is uh, the collector. And that's me, Dave, who's uh, the collector today. Um, but this is such a great spot. I think I'll be back there again. Uh, so, let's go over the, the, the index, the, uh, the pollution tolerance index that we've been building. Again, we got a different location. We did a few of these for the Mississippi River south of, uh, or east, I should say, of Bemidji. But here's, the, here's how we're going to rank this one out today. We found four species, and we actually found two extra species. 
um, more. So I'm working on a, an amendment of this because water penny we never see around here, whereby we get partial credit for finding more of, the, of these uh, pollution intolerant species. But the way this index works is essentially the more intolerant you are of pollution, the higher your weight. So these these animals, um, stoneflies, mayfly, we found caddisfly larvae, we found three species of those, and, uh, and gill snails were all of the pollution intolerant kind, and they had a weighting of four. So their grand total for our index was 16. We found a couple of things over here in the moderately intolerant. We found scuds, which we find a lot. And we found a couple of little babies in crayfish. They were some of our favorites. They were pretty cute. And so they got a rating of three, and they came to a total of six. We actually didn't find anything in here, but we, they might be in here. So we believe if we can look deeper and harder and longer, that we might actually find some more. Um, and then just because we find things in the pollution tolerant category does not mean that we are in bad water. Um, because this index favors diversity. And by all means, these are not the only things that you find out there, but these are things that well bring themselves to their particular category. So if you're seeing, as you're seeing a cluster in the top two categories, and so if we work out our full index, we got an index rating of 16 plus 6, that's 22. And we're just one short of excellent, but we are at a very, very, very good index rating. So we're going to call that, if we look harder and look deeper, we might actually push that over to uh, excellent if we, as we keep looking at our sample here. Um, are there any questions out there uh, on the, in our live feed? Okay, viewers, I hope you're, you're knowing that we bring you these shows daily, daily now, and we're going to of that at 3.30. And that's because of the uh, Beltrami uh, Electrics Roundup program. So that's a, so a place where by the, you write out your electric bill instead of uh, $255.10, you make it $256, round it up, and if enough people do that, we get enough money to run our cameras, do our shows, and uh, buy more alcohol, and not the, the kind that we're going to drink after the show, but the kind that we put our bugs in, and, uh, and more supplies. And so we're been doing some assessments here around Bemidji. We're pretty happy with what we're seeing this spring. We're seeing a lot of things. Things are real small, a lot of children of things that have been moving around already. So uh, that's where we are today. Anything you want to add? Carl, could we think? So I'm just going to mention small crayfish. That's something that anyone in Bemidji actually, if you go kayaking right now, you'll actually be able to find the adult crayfish. Yep, yep. So they're having children. That's always a good sign of, of healthy water. We live in a place here in the world of Michigan, Minnesota, where the waters are generally in pretty good shape. Um, what I find in fact waters uh, further downstream, most are farming in large populations, and lots of the, the large populations, because of all the hard surfaces rushing, a lot of pollutants in farms because they, well, you know what farms do, and so they end up in the waters. Um, Generally speaking, farms are actually harsher for the most part because they don't treat their waste, whereas cities do. However, there is some waste that runs over the hard surface. So, we're finding good stuff, we're happy. I mean, sometimes environmental news is, is daunting and depressing, but we're finding good stuff this spring. So, we're, we're going to be happy hunting all summer. If some of this stuff grows up, it's going to be bigger, better, ready to go into the jars and uh, to drag out into our collection. So, Carl, what are your what are your what do you think we should do with our collection as we move forward? What should we do? More organization, of course. Obviously, but I think generally, I think a little bit more uh, stuff we can actually show off the collection because the whole point of the collection is. So, so that sounds to me like you say it to you, our audience. Um, if you find something weird, give us a call. Bring it in. We're, we're trying to figure out what it is. We maybe if you want to donate it to our cause. We do carry a collection, and this is the kind of place where those animals are kept. Because even in a hundred years, this stuff they could come back and go, wow, oh, they, they saw this stuff a hundred years ago. And we try to hold this stuff in preservation, to preserve state as long and as well as we can. And so now we're happy to have Carl with us to uh, help us with that because we've been kind of, we lost our collection manager this year, so we're happy to have uh, that uh, with him in place. I'm also happy to have the sky. We, we're sort of an incubator here of ideas, and we've been running up our since we got here for 27 years now. Um, that's all I have. Is anything, any commentary out there? Is anybody watching yet? Hi, oh, yeah. hi. <laughs> Good. What are you gonna, what are you gonna preserve? Well, we're gonna. What do you think we should preserve? Let's uh, preserve. We have a label for we got this, the stonefly. Let's put the stonefly in. Here's the stonefly right here. Yep. Give a little alcohol. Put in the stonefly. Sorry, Stonefly, because you are so awesome, you will give your life for this collection today. Um, so which one is the one? right there. It's a fast moving one. Why don't you grab them? Try to, or you might 
Well, you don't want the water so much. He's gonna. He, he should be slowing down a little bit. <laughs> yeah, these guys. It'll take a little bit to catch these little guys. The stoneflies. That's one of their characteristics. Is they move about. They they escape from our. Uh, <laughs> from our, uh, our containers all the time. We had this crowdsourced with some of our guests today, so if you want to come by on, an, on another Tuesday, we'll, have, we'll help you up. You can help us stone, you can help us crowdsource this stuff. The stone oh, sorry, flies go swimming around in there a little bit, get drunk for a little bit, and then he'll give his life for our, our collection. But where there's one, there's many, and we're happy to see these, these stone flies. These are the premier creatures that we're seeing out here. Right here on the bottom, there's the label, card in the handwriting on that, but and so that stonefly was uh, the youngster. We found a big one over in the Mississippi River a couple weeks ago, so we were happy to see that. It was the furthest we'd seen one down south, or at least downriver uh, from the headwater distillery. That's all we have today for our show. Um, come by and visit us. We're open 9.30 to 5, Monday through Saturday. On Sunday, 1 to 5. we got to take a short day one day because uh, we get tired out from all that.